We've been talking about embedding methods, in particular looking at locally linear embedding. And now it's time to look at a different method uh, called multidimensional scaling. So first, let's talk about distance metrics. And in particular, we've been making very heavy use of the Euclidean distance metric. So this is just the sum squared differences between feature values in, in two feature vectors. Uh, this distance metric is really easy for us to compute. However, there are lots of situations where it's not really very appropriate or even trivial to, to compute this. So we've already played with a variety of different data sets where different features have different units and actually live in different scales. And, and so we have to be really careful when we treat these uh, different features as being equivalent to one another from the perspective of a distance sense. So what does it, what does it mean to uh, compare uh, differences in dollars versus differences in feet? For other scenarios, it's not trivial to simply take a difference between two values. So for example, if I have two angles, taking the difference between the, the values that represent those angles, it doesn't give us the full picture. So what is the difference between one degree and 359 degrees? Is it 358 degrees or is it uh, two degrees? The Euclidean distance metric would say 358. So we need some ways to uh, deal with uh, different kinds of distance metrics. Here's another scenario drawn from the human perceptual world. Uh, so this is color perception. So, so the experiment is one where we present a human with pairs of colors and we ask whether or not these colors are different, and if so, by how much? And, and so if you look at, say, G20Y versus G10Y, I actually have a very hard time distinguishing between those, those two colors, but G10Y versus Y40R, that's a, a very large uh, difference. Now, in the case of color, we actually do have a nice featural description of, of, of what a color is, but there are plenty of scenarios where we, we don't have this uh, kind of a representation. But yet, a human judge can actually tell us whether or not two things are the same or similar, or whether there are big differences between them. And, and in doing so, we, we'd still like to have a sense of how different samples might live in some sort of a space. In this particular case, our set of samples lives very nicely on a circle. So this area of multidimensional scaling in part was actually invented to deal with these perceptual kinds of issues. And another domain where, where this comes up is, and, and has actually been used, is in distinguishing the taste of say, different whiskeys. So in a whiskey distillery, you'll have a set of uh, judges who will, will take pairs of samples and, and taste them and then make judgments about whether or not they taste the same or very similar or whether they have very uh, distinct flavors. And in this case, we really don't know what that feature space might look like for describing these different samples. And, and yet we still want a sense of how these samples might lay out in, in some sort of a metric space. All right, so multidimensional scaling then, uh, it's, it's useful for scenarios where we want to be able to use distance metrics that are different than Euclidean metrics. And again, Euclidean metrics are at the heart of a lot of our machine learning algorithms. Multidimensional scaling is also uh, useful when we can't really measure the, the features, but we can measure the distances between samples. Here's an outline of the algorithm, and then we'll turn to the, the mathematics here. Um, first, we either compute pairwise distances 
or we measure the pairwise distances using whatever metric is appropriate. And then what we do is we try to embed a set of corresponding points into an m-dimensional space that respect these differences. And this step actually feels a lot like what we did with locally linear embedding. So let's look at the mathematics. So first off, what do we mean by distance? And, and another word that you're, you will see is uh, dissimilarity. By a proper distance metric, uh, so we have say two samples X and Y here, the distance between two samples, first off is always non-negative. It always is greater than or equal to zero. When we say that the distance between X and Y is zero, this is only true if we really mean that X and Y are the same thing. We also want our distance metric to be uh, symmetric, meaning the distance from X to Y is always equal to the distance between Y and X. So this is our symmetry. And then finally, our, we want our distance metric to satisfy the triangle inequality. So in here I have samples x, y, and z. And the distance from x to z is always going to be less than or equal to the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z. And in Euclidean space, this, this always uh, is satisfied. Okay, and geometrically, we can draw this out, x, uh, y, and z. The, the distance from x to z is less than or equal to the sum of these two distances here. All right, so this is what we mean by a, a proper metric uh, distance measure. And now let's uh, start writing cost functions. So we have a whole bunch of samples. We'll address those as, as I or J, we'll, I'll use both of those. And we know what the distances are from I to J. And, and given those distances, what we want to do is place a set of points into a Euclidean space and I'll refer to those feature vectors as Z. And we did the same thing in, uh, in locally linear embedding. We, we want to determine where uh, every possible sample is located within this Z space. And we want to do it in such a way that we respect these distances here. So what do we mean by this? So let's, let's write a cost function for sample I. So let's imagine looking at all of the distances uh, in the training set. In this case, J is not just a neighborhood, it's over the, in, the rest of the training set. So I'm actually gonna write this as J not equal to I, meaning uh, all other possible samples. And we're given this DIJ, and now we can measure the difference between uh, the corresponding Z's. So there are a couple different ways to write this. And that's, that's a squared error metric. There's one more paren there. And this is equal, if, if you're using the book notation, this is dij minus the magnitude of the difference vector between zi and gj squared. For z, this is living in a Euclidean space. And this is just the actual distance 
between point I and point J in this new space that we're embedding into, and this is the distance in the original space that we're working in, whether or not we, we know what that feature space is. So that is the cost with respect to a single sample EI, and the full cost function is just the sum of these. And so the optimization problem that we have is that we want uh, our z's to be equal to argmin z of, of e. And in some sense, e is really a function of all of the, the z's that we have. So what this says is pick my z's such that I minimize the error between the distances in the new space and the distances in the original space. Now again, this is not a unique mapping, just like in LLE, uh, we can pick that very first point, Z0, to be anywhere we want, but then once we start putting down the other Zs, Z1, Z2, et cetera, we have to start respecting the distance metrics. As we execute this over and over again, you can end up with different solutions, but Geometrically, they should uh, look very similar to one another on, under uh, translation and rotation. All right, that's the essence of the mathematics. We're not going to work through the, the process of actually solving this, but I did want to say a couple of other quick things about MDS. Uh, for a, a query, so now I have a new, I know my distances between my training set and some query point the process is uh, going to be the same. I write a cost function for my query, which is just uh, a, a sum over all of the samples in, in the training set. And then I uh, have my distance from I to Q. I know what my Zs are for all of my training set points, but I do not know what ZQ is. So here, now ZQ is going to be just the argmin, and it's the ZQ hat of ZQ uh, that minimizes this, this EQ function. So, so we don't have to go about measuring distances again across the training set. We just have to focus on the distances between the query point and all points within the training set. All right, so that gives you a sense of what the training process looks like in MDS, and it also gives you a sense of what the query process looks like. So a couple of notes about multidimensional scaling. The cost function is actually a global metric, and what I mean by this is that we are respecting all of the pairwise distances between the samples in our data set. This is in contrast to locally linear embedding, where in essence the distances to the neighborhood mattered, but the distances to all other points uh, were not taken into account. So, so we were able to handle uh, local constraints, but we don't actually handle global constraints. Uh, next up, let's look at a little bit of code.